Well, uh, first, uh, I was very happy to come and communicate to the UNU uh, about uh, risk management in such uh, circumstances. Uh, I have been in Japan for one week now, and we, uh, together with a group of experts from RSN, the French Institute for Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety, and uh, a group of key journalists, of leading journalists from France, we came and uh, for a week-long program to um, meet people, to see for, that for ourselves, not to read documents about Fukushima, but to go in the field into the plant of Fukushima Daiichi, uh, to visit sites in the prefectures, villages, towns, uh, agricultural cooperatives, to, to understand physically, if you like, uh, how uh, people cope. Uh, how decisions are understood and how the plans are. And uh, um, uh, there are several points I would like to mention. Well, the first one is that it's quite uh, encouraging, the, uh, the determination uh, and the courage of, of people to address the challenge. The Japan uh, seems to be no longer uh, in the mode of uh, why and who is responsible, but more into the mode of, okay, we have to cope with it. And it was quite interesting to see uh, TEPCO uh, plans and already progress on the site to actually uh, start rehabilitating the, uh, the plant in radiological terms. It was quite encouraging to see uh, the, the messages from the mayors of Fukushima prefectures, which we met. To see. There are plans on the way, and we see things moving, the decontamination in the land, um, the, the programs. Uh, by the University of Fukushima, for example, the t of the scientists who knew nothing about radiation, but they're starting uh, radiation protection uh, training, etc. So I think the, the investment of Japan, both the, the moral investment, the people's investment, and the financial investment, because all that costs a lot of money, uh, makes me very uh, hopeful in the way that Japan will uh, recover uh, from the, this uh, catastrophe uh, rather successfully. So that's the first uh, observation. The, the second observation uh, is that um, there could be uh, probably an improvement in the way that the uh, radiological risk to the population is discussed with them uh, to optimize decisions. Uh, I'm talking very practically about the, the policy for the return of evacuated people from the green and orange zones in Fukushima prefecture, where the radiological targets which have been set by the government are, are good, reasonable targets. But the way uh, of assessing how the targets are being made is uh, probably taking, um, could be done better by doing it with the people concerned. Uh, it is uh, my experience from smaller incidents which occurred in France that when you do the risk management with the people concerned, uh, it's usually uh, cheaper, uh, more efficient. Uh, there is a um, consensus building. Uh, and in the end, uh, people can manage their own risk better than having uh, some administration manage it for, um, for them. Because this is the more the way humanity works. We, uh, we are all confronted to risks from uh, traffic risks to um, natural uh, uh, you know, uh, storms, etc. And, and so we are, as human beings, trained uh, in our education, in our culture, to deal with risks which we can understand, which we can appreciate and, uh, and relate to experience. The problem with radiation is that it cannot be related to experience or measurements or by the senses. So it's very important to bring to the people not the solutions, but the way to define solutions. So in, if you do that, people will go back into an, a, a mental environment which say no. And the fear will disappear, and the solutions will be by nature optimized. This is requires uh, decision makers to uh, not try to decide everything for everybody, but to sit back a little bit and provide the instruments for the local communities, for the companies to deal with it. Uh, we saw a very interesting experience in a, in a cooperative, that is agricultural cooperative in the town of Dati. And we saw these people did it on their own. And they have acquired a radiation protection experience, which is very good, very professional and good enough 
to manage their own risks. They, they invested in some equipment. They, they managed the reduction of the contamination in their, in their fruit. And now the business is growing again, um, slowly, but because there is a confidence. But it's very positive, and you can feel when you listen to them. But their determination, and they know that what they're doing will be successful. It would be completely different if they had been ordered to do that or this or that by other people. They did it themselves. And that groups people together and gives them moral strength to address, the, to assess, to address uh, these difficult circumstances. So it's, I think, the most important lesson that I've seen on the ground here in Fukushima Prefecture. So that is, a, again, a difficult question to answer for a foreigner who, uh, who knows little. After all, we have uh, seen that from a long way. We, uh, RSN, studied the, the um, accident and its consequences, but from a distance. Um, but nevertheless, there may be some, uh, some indications. In, in the short term, as I say, uh, there is um, a need to um, bring the people back from the evacuation zones as, as fast as possible, because the longer the situation stays, the more uh, damage it does to the continuity of society, to the economy, and to the families involved. So any, any policy adjustments that would accelerate without increasing the radiological risk of force, accelerating the return of people uh, would be very good. With respect to the, to the plant in Fukushima, there is one issue which is a short-term, should be s seen as a short-term goal, is to deal with the uh, remaining issue of the contaminated water. There, there are two aspects. First, uh, TEPCO should continue, but I think they will do it, to uh, limit or, or even um, uh, finalize the leak, the underground leak into the sea of heavily contaminated water. I think we saw that the walls are being made, and so this will be done, I think, uh, as soon as possible. The other issue, which is more difficult, is the issue of, this, of the water which is stored in all these tanks on the side. Uh, and there's a lot of water there, about 400,000 tons of water. And this is stock is growing all the time, and it's uh, characterized by the fact that it's uh, been decontaminated, but there is still tritium. Tritium is a radiotoxic uh, radionuclide of medium, well, fairly short life, uh, a, few, a few years, uh, 10 years or so. Uh, and it is not very toxic, but it is still, of course, a radio contaminant. Um, all power plants produce in the world produce uh, tritiated water, which is released into, the, into the, the rivers or the sea, depending where the plant is. And this, uh, authorized, this are authorized releases. They have been checked by uh, public authorities to be harmless to the environment and, uh, and to the humans. Fukushima Daiichi plant had such uh, an authorization to release on a regular basis tritium. Uh, now, this stock of water, in fact, uh, represents uh, a certain time of the original release capacity. And, uh, Seen from our expertise, the only way, because there is no technology available to remove tritium from water and to deal with it as a waste. So we believe that the only way is to actually uh, release that water into the ocean in a controlled way, uh, according to a process that will have been studied by stakeholders and by authorities and uh, been analyzed that not leading to any damage to the environment. Of course, I'm very much aware this is a very sensitive issue because promises have been made not to pollute anymore, but this is the only way. And it cannot be decided uh, uh, by the authorities uh, saying to the people, trust me, it has no consequence. This is too late to do that. I think Japan has to go through the process of doing the assessment of the absence of risk with the people, with the fishermen, with the people who live around the coast in that area with, with the people who sell the fish, etc., so that they can be party to the analysis, party to all the risk discussions, and they, may, they should have all the time they need to ask questions, to get scientific answers, so that they become as 
persuaded as we are as experts that there is no risk. So it may take some time, but it's the, it's the safest way. If we don't do that, um, the risk is that a seismic event uh, will make a collapse of these tanks, and all of a sudden you will have uh, an event which will be visible from the whole world of all this water going into the harbor of Fukushima plant, which would be a very disastrous image. Limited consequences, but there would be consequences locally because all this water at the same time, it's not a good idea. So that's the challenge because there is no way to remove the tritium. So either it's left there for to decay, for radioactive decay, but you need to keep it one century or something like that. Uh, or, or you deal with it, uh, with society, uh, in another way, as it's done in other power stations. So that's uh, that's a quite an interesting uh, uh, for us to, from abroad to to uh, see how Japan will cope with this uh, with this issue. Now, of course, there are other um, issues which need to be uh, dealt with, which is particularly uh, with the nuclear industry. And if I short term, of course, is the NRA responsibility to gain confidence by the public in the quality of their assessment of the conditions for the restart of some of the power plants, for which it would be proven to be acceptable technically, societally. And the third one is more in the long term, is uh, the future of nuclear industry. The, um, I, I believe very much that the reactors that are today operating in the world are not um, have not been designed with enough uh, precautions because it is not uh, acceptable that such accidents can have such large consequences. Uh, I think no technology is accident proof completely, but nuclear industry is the only industry that can create such large scale disasters. Um, so somehow the technology has to be uh, looked into it again uh, to design reactors uh, which cannot lead uh, to such consequences. I think the, if you look back in history, uh, what has happened is a kind of uh, loophole, uh, scientific and political loophole, where it was felt acceptable to have a cutoff in the probability of accident. So very beyond design, what is called technically beyond design conditions, that means big catastrophe like the tsunami, but there could be other situations that aggressed the plant much behind its, its design uh, that was left open and not regulated and the technology uh, did not cope with it and said, well, it should not happen, it's so rare that we can forget about it. Well, history shows that it, we can't forget about it. So the technology has to be reviewed so that even in, in such cases where the reactor will be destroyed by something, there would be um, limited releases into the environment. So that needs going back to the drawing board for the nuclear industry, for their long-term future. So, uh, Dr. Sal, we are told we uh, have the question. We, uh, what uh, expectations do you have for the uh, our Kushima Global Communication Program from your view? Well, um, I, I would say that the challenges uh, to, to humanity with, with respect to the impact of nuclear industry is a challenge that should not be left to each country to deal with separately. So we need, um, we need science, we need technology approaches, we need society, um, and of course um, organizations like the United Nations uh, are uh, a very nice uh, way to address uh, the such thing internationally. And um, in particular, we have the IEA, which is a, a good institution. Um, but it doesn't address the science as such. The IEA is bringing together stakeholders, regulators, industry, etc., to actually design policies, harmonize approaches, uh, write standards on the basis of best experience. But there is something which cannot be done in such a diplomatic circle, is to actually create the science and communicate with the public. Uh, because this has to be done from a different perspective. And I think uh, universities in general are a better 
um, environment, if you like, for that, because it's separated from politics, it's separated from regulatory uh, conditions, and it's therefore freer to innovate in thinking. And uh, I'm very happy, personally, that the, the UNU has taken on this, uh, this challenge to build an international program, and I think that should be made visible to uh, member states of the United Nations. Uh, it is my understanding that many countries who don't have nuclear power, but who have uh, nuclear power in their surroundings, in a, in, a, in, a, in a country close to them, and they are, after Fukushima, some of them are concerned about the consequences for them of, uh, uh, of an accident that might happen in a, in a neighboring country. Uh, and clearly, they don't have uh, big institutions for radiation. They are, don't need them. They don't have institutions. They don't plan to spend a lot of money on safe nuclear safety because they have no industry. But they need to be prepared for the challenge. And I think such program could, could, be, could be of help to countries who, who don't plan to have nuclear power but who could need to face also informing their public um, about potential uh, consequences of a nuclear accident. And in any case, um, there's not only the risk of a nuclear accident. For example, uh, the radiological, the use of radioactivity in medical is growing fast. Uh, and there are a number of incidents. The, the practice of exposing people, it's, it's, it's a good support to medical activities, medical investigations or even therapies, etc. The downside of it is that there is a radiological risk, which many people also don't understand. Um, and uh, your program can also help, I think, understanding the uh, and accepting, but also understanding the risks associated to the use of radioactivity, also in the medical, uh, which is not rejected by the public opinion, but which generates risk, which also need to be optimized by people being aware of it. So I think there is a broad beyond an accident, which hopefully will not happen again ever, or maybe not for a long time. That's what we hope for, and we work for that. So we could say your program will not be any use because there won't be any more accident. But beyond, there are smaller situations where your program could be very beneficial.